Hello, welcome back to my channel. I'm Lena, this is Lena's Bookshelf, and it's time for my May wrap up. I cannot believe it is the end of May. Whew. May was May was a hard month for me. May was a long month. It was a trying month in a lot of different ways for me. So it was really nice this month to have books to kind of use for that sense of escapism. So I have my coffee here to help keep me going. I have my reading bullet journal here with some of my stats. I have my computer here with some more stats and we're just gonna get into it. We're gonna talk about all the books that I read and what I thought about them. I also just yesterday was on the live show with my friend Gwen, her channel, Gwendolyn Kensinger. She hosts live reading wrap ups every month with some different creators. And I was so honored to be asked to do that with her and Jesse from Reading with Jess and Jordan from Sorry But Solid. They are so fun and so smart. And we had a lot of fun talking about all the books that we read. So definitely go back and watch that live show. I will link it down below in the description box. So the first book I'm gonna talk about is The Perfect Wife by J.P. Delaney. And I read this book because it was the buddy read for Jacqueline's Patreon. And this book was not good. I gave it one star. Um, it was about a man who creates a robot version of his wife. His wife has disappeared and so he creates this robot version of her. And so you're reading from her perspective, kind of ambulating her environment, learning how her new robot body works, but also trying to figure out what happened to the real wife that went missing. And I had a lot of problematic things with this book. Uh, the men in this book were just horrible and misogynistic. And some of the ways that they presented applied behavioral analysis was I felt like a little bit misleading. I did work in applied behavior analysis for a couple of years and the facility that I work for uses it heavily in the treatment of our clients. And I just felt like he demonized an entire evidence-based practice based on uh, one experience. So I don't know, I had a lot of issues with the book, but those are the main ones. Um, the ending was strange, but it was a little bit ambiguous and I do like an ambiguous ending. So. The ending almost led it to be a two star, but um, no, this book was one star. I do not recommend it to anyone. The next book I read was Like a Sister by Kelly Garrett. And I read this because I am part of a Facebook book club and every month they do some buddy reads and they chat about them in a Discord server. And I made the mistake of reading this at the beach. This is not a light beach read. <laughs> we are following a woman who learns that her sister has passed away and they are ruling it an overdose, but she thinks that there's some more going on there than just an overdose. I rated this book three stars and I would recommend it because it does have a lot of great conversation about systemic racism, about growing up as a black female in New York, about some of the judgment that somebody who suffers from drug addiction might go through. Um, it seemed like everybody wrote off Desiree's death simply because she had a past of partying and drug addiction and alcohol abuse. But this girl is really coming into her own as she tries to figure out what happened to her sister. But the reason I gave it three stars is because in the end, when we found out what actually happened to Desiree, it was not satisfying. We learn the basics of what happened to her, but there's a lot of details that were just never given out. Um, but it definitely, the ending left a lot to be desired. <clears throat> this is not technically a thriller, but it did have some intense moments and there was some, some suspense in there, but definitely not a light beach read, definitely a dark read. I would recommend somebody read this in like the fall or winter time. The next book I read was The Good Lie by A.R. Torre. And I read this for the Sleep When I'm Dead book club. So my friend Jessie on her channel, Reading with Jess, she has a different host, read a book with her every month. They read backlist thrillers and they do a live show talking about them. So I will link the live show in the description box and maybe up in the cards too, but I really enjoyed this book. I ended up giving it four and a half stars. I think my Goodreads says four though. And this is about a psychiatrist who treats serial killers and people with some pretty intense mental illness, some pretty dangerous um, deviant behaviors. And she and a lawyer are trying to catch a serial killer that is kidnapping, mutilating, and murdering teenage boys in their area. The reason that I didn't give this book a full five stars was because there were some parts that I felt like happened so quickly that I had to go back and reread them. And I felt like I really had to pay attention. And I found myself going back like three different times because I, 
I felt like I was missing things. The other reason that I didn't give it five stars is because the psychiatrist sometimes um, things that happened to her were a little bit too convenient. I felt like she missed things that were a little bit too convenient and some of the things that happened uh, that led to the resolution of who the serial killer was were just a little bit too convenient. I also um, didn't love all of the points of view. I felt like some of the points of view weren't really necessary and the books could have still been great without them. But definitely go and watch that live show so you can hear Jesse and Ashley from Ashley's Little Library talk about it. Next I'm gonna talk about all of the books I read for Thrill Till the Weekend. So Thrill Till the Weekend just ended yesterday and it is a weekend readathon hosted by Jacqueline. I'll link her announcement video below. But this was the third round of Thrill to the Weekend and she had some fantastic hosts and they had some really fun activities that we did this weekend including a movie watch and a live show and a buddy read. And by the time you're watching this my reading vlog for Thrill to the Weekend is probably up so I'll link that also. So the buddy read was The Missing by Kirsten Modlin and I ended up giving this one two stars. So you're following this woman who is on vacation and her husband is not there with her. She's just hanging out on the beach by herself on this vacation. And this guy comes up to her and is like, hey, you want to go on a free boat ride? And she's like, sure, why not? So she goes on this boat ride and they end up leaving her and a couple of other people on an island. So she ends up being left on this island with these other people and they're trying to figure out why they're there, who put them there, for what purpose. And it just was strange. There was this strange point of view in the beginning and then you don't find out anything about that point of view until the end. And it's very misleading. So it was hard to figure out who this point of view was from. Sometimes I had a hard time remembering what character was what. And the twist and the ending could have been better, but I would have given it a three star if it weren't for the last two sentences of the book that just basically totally und undid the entire ending. And you guys know, I don't like a perfectly wrapped up with a bow convenient ending. I like it when endings are a little bit messy. I have a couple of other Kirsten Modlin books on my TBR and I'm hoping I like them. I'm hoping that Kirsten Modlin wasn't a one hit wonder for me because I did really enjoy the arrangement, but I haven't heard a lot of great things about her other books that some of my friends have been reading recently. The next thing I read for Thrill Till the Weekend was One Little Mistake by Lucinda Berry. And this is a novella that is exclusive to Audible. So if you have an Audible account, you can download it for free. And so it only took me like two hours to listen to it since I listened to it on two and a half times speed. But it's about this woman who gets arrested for drunk driving and child endangerment. And she doesn't remember what she did the night before. So she has to try and figure out what it is that she did that led to her arrest. I gave this one three stars. I felt like it was good. And I felt like I could have done with a little bit more. I felt like building the entire plot until about 20 minutes before the end. And then it had to quickly wrap it up. And so I felt like Lucinda Berry could have stretched us out into a full novel and I would have enjoyed it just as much. So I gave this one three stars. Then for Thrill to the Weekend, I read a short story by Riley Page and it was called Once Solved. And it's about a woman who works for the behavior analysis unit of the FBI. And she has recently gone from working in the field to now training new officers. So she's kind of reliving some of her heyday of working in the field when she would hunt serial killers. This was fine. It was really short. It was a quick way to get a thriller short story in during this readathon and I gave it two stars. The last thing I read for Thrill Till the Weekend was Blaze by Stephen King. This is the last novel that Stephen King wrote under the pseudonym Richard Bachman and it kind of sat undone for a while. Um, there's a foreword in, at the beginning of this where Stephen King talks about how he wrote it and then was like, no, this isn't good and kind of put it aside. And then when he was going back and publishing all the Richard Bachman novels, he kind of pulled this one out and kind of tweaked it a little bit and ended up really enjoying it and says that he wishes he had published it sooner. So in this book, you're following Blaze and, and Blaze has an intellectual disability and he meets this friend, George, and George kind of takes advantage of Blaze a little bit and kind of manipulates him into running some of these cons. So Blaze is tasked with kidnapping a baby for ransom. And so you're following him as he's trying to kidnap this baby. And it's really a shame that everybody in Blaze's life has told him, you know, he's dumb, he's not gonna learn much, he's never gonna amount to anything, he's a dummy, he's stupid, because Blaze is actually really smart and he's really caring and he's really empathetic. And it's just such a shame that because he didn't learn as quickly as everybody else growing up, that he was really written off. After Blaze kidnaps this baby, he takes, them to, he takes him to this cabin in the woods. And it was really sad by the ending. I 
I like how it ended, but it was also sad. So I really enjoyed this one and I gave it three and a half stars. So those were the four things that I read for Thrill Till the Weekend. Now, the last six books that I'm gonna talk about were picked for me by Monica. I met her recently and I'm gonna link her channel below. So Monica picked the books for me that I put in a jar and randomly drew from throughout the month. And she picked some really good ones. She actually filmed herself picking the books for me and kind of talked about why she chose the books for me that she did, which is really fun. So thank you so much, Monica, for picking these books for me. You picked some really good ones and we're gonna talk about them. So the first book that she picked for me was Saving Megan by DJ Palmer. And this is a thriller about Munchausen by proxy. So this girl, Megan, has some pretty strange symptoms and she's gone through a lot of testing and her doctors are starting to wonder if either she's faking it or if her mother is making her sick. And I've read a couple of other Munchausen by proxy thrillers and this one was was really well done. I felt like it was a kind of different angle of Munchausen by proxy. I gave this one four stars because the ending was super unrealistic and to me didn't make sense. But I did enjoy this. This is the second book by DJ Palmer that I've read and I gave the other book that I read by him five stars and this is a four star so I'm definitely going to try and pick up more DJ Palmer books in the future. The next book I have here is Always Watching by Chevy Stevens and in this book you're following Nadine who is a psychiatrist at a psych hospital and she is treating this woman who is suicidal and has escaped from a cult. As as Nadine is treating this woman, she starts experiencing some PTSD symptoms because Nadine also was in a cult as a child. You're really gonna pick right now to drink water? Okay, cool. The dog chose right now to drink water, of course. Thanks, thanks for that. You just wanted some water, you were so thirsty. Okay, where was I? So I really enjoyed the character of Nadine because she was so real and so raw. And I loved the com the commentary on how psychiatrists and people that work in mental health are not immune to mental health disorders and mental health issues. She talks about the shame she feels for, for suffering with OCD, having a daughter that struggles with drug addiction and really just having to deal with her own demons while trying to help other people deal with their demons. And I think that Nadine is probably the fa my favorite character that I read about this month and I'm really excited because some people were telling me that a couple of Chevy Stevens other books have the same character Nadine in them so I'm definitely going to try and pick those up because I really want more of Nadine. I only gave this three stars though because the original plot was really good and it was a four star read for halfway through the book and then it just kind of fizzled out and then the ending was nothing special, very predictable. The next book I have here is Defending Jacob by William Lande and originally I gave this book four stars right after I read it but over the past couple of weeks I have kept thinking about this book and it has been on my mind a lot so I've decided to move my ranking up to a five star. So this is the first five star I've had since February. So it definitely takes a lot for me to give a book a five star. But in this book, you're following a lawyer and he is working with some detectives and law enforcement to try and figure out who murdered a teenage boy in their area. And as it turns out, the only suspect they have for the murder of this teenage boy is this lawyer's son, Jacob. And so this lawyer has to go from finding a killer to defending his son. And this lawyer struggles with the fact that he needs to get his son acquitted of murder, whether or not he actually is the murderer. And the ending of this was so good. It was a little bit ambiguous, but it was so well done. And like I said, I constantly thought about the ending. And I have heard that this was made into a TV miniseries, so I'm definitely gonna try and look that up. Also because I heard that Chris Evans plays the main character, so. So Monica, you picked a five star read for me. The next book I have is The Hunting Wives by Mae Cobb and I have a reading vlog for this. I will link my video and I will also link Elizabeth Gordon's video because I did buddy read this with her. So you can hear all of our thoughts in that vlog. But basically I'm giving this one three stars because while I wanted to keep reading it, I wanted to know what happened. I didn't want to put it down. It was fast paced. All of those things were positive, but I didn't like any of the characters. I thought it was unrealistic. I thought it was just excellent extra and yeah I I I'm learning that I don't really like the rich mama drama yet I keep reading them and I keep rating them three stars so if you have some good rich mama drama recommendations definitely let me know in the comments below next book I have here is blue ticket by Sophie McIntosh and this is probably one of the most disappointing books I've read so far this year this is a dystopian about a society where as soon as girls get their menstrual cycle they go and they are given a ticket and this the color of your ticket decides your future so if you're given a white ticket you get married and have babies and you live your life as a mother 
If you are given a blue ticket, then you don't get married, you don't have children, and you go into the workplace. You get to have a career. This girl Kala is a blue ticket, but then she finds herself pregnant. And so in order to keep her baby, she has to run away from society and kind of live in the woods. And she ends up finding some other women who are on the run for similar things. And they, they kind of create this little bond, this little family. But you don't really learn much about the society. Kala is talking about, oh, this is going to be so hard. I don't know if I'm ready to, to be a mother. I don't know if all this stuff. But I mean, she purposely put herself in this position. She knew all of this going into it. She kind of purposely got pregnant. So it was just hard to feel much sympathy for her because she knew what the consequences of all of this was going into it. And then the ending was unsatisfying. So I was super, dis I'm super disappointed about this one because I had really high hopes for this one. I usually love dystopian novels, but this one just missed the mark. So I gave it two stars. So the last book I'm going to talk about is True Bays by Sarah Novich. And this one I gave four stars. So way to go, Monica. You picked two four stars and a five star. So thank you so much. So I got this as an add-on this month in my book of the month box because Jordan from Sorry Book Solid read it and posted a vlog on it and she loved it. And so I really wanted to try it out because I do have a background in American Sign Language and I did take some classes in interpreting in college. So I already knew a lot about deaf culture, but I still learned some things in this book. I think that if you want to learn more about deafness or you want to learn more about acceptance, then this is a great book. I think this is really well done because it's a fictional story that just naturally teaches you a lot about deafness, deaf culture, acceptance, there's LGBTQ representation, there's disability representation. They talk about Black American Sign Language, which is something that I didn't have much information about before this. So I just really liked everything about this book. It's kind of a slice of life story where you're following these teens at a deaf boarding school. And I think that a lot of people don't know that there's multiple different types of deafness and multiple different types of language barriers that somebody who suffers from deafness might go through. It made me feel warm and fuzzy at times. It made me sad. It made me angry at the way some of these people were treated. And it really it, uh, talks about the importance of language and how access to language in our country is not as easy as we think it is. So I highly recommend you look into this book and add it to your TBR. I think it's super informative and I think it was really well done. Okay, that is all the books that I read in the month of May. <clears throat> Reading through some basic stats here. So I had one, one star. I had two, two stars. I had three, four, five, five stars, one, two, three, four stars, and one five star. So a pretty good reading month if I do say so myself. Some not so great, some really great. Let me know in the comments below if you've read any of these books or if you're going to add any of them to your TBR. Thank you so much for watching. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It really helps out my channel and I'll see you in my next video.